Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take some of your favorite pop culture icons within comic books, video games, and movies, and we recap them, allowing you to have a better understanding of something that maybe you didn't fully grasp the first time through. Today, we're going to be covering the storyline within the video game Injustice 2. This is one of my favorite video games, personally, because it's a superhero punching each other video game. Now, keep in mind a couple of things. If you've been keeping up with our channel in the comic book, some things don't fully line up. The video game and the comic book were coming out at the same time, so some of the plot lines don't make sense or it needs to be retconned. I tried to fix them to the best of my ability within the video game recap, but some of them are still not going to make sense. Case in point, stuff like Damien's reaction to Kara and things like that. So keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's get into the video game. We also give you both endings, so keep that in mind. With the events of the Injustice 2 comic book coming to the end, the Injustice 2 game continues the story of Superman's downward spiral into chaos. After Batman led his insurgency to bring down Superman's regime, Superman was placed into a cell under the effects of the Red Sun, weakening him and keeping him from getting free. But as the game starts out, it begins many years into the past, during the final moments of Krypton, just before its destruction. In the streets, the young Supergirl Kara is shown to be fleeing from Brainiac's Beta drones with no way to stomp them. As she narrowly escapes a group of Beta drones, Kara is forced to watch Brainiac as he absorbs the city of Argo to add to his collection of worlds. Just before Kara gives in to the drones, her mother saves her, revealing that a ship has been made for her just as one has been made for her younger cousin Kal-El by Jor-El. Kara's mother told her that it was her job to make sure that Kal-El escapes Krypton and is to be taught the ways of the Kryptonians so that their people may have a chance of surviving. She tried to fight against it, but her mother put her into the ship just before the Beta drones attacked the facility. As the two ships took off, they left behind the home of the Kryptonians, only to watch it be destroyed. The two ships were destined for Earth, but as the core of Krypton exploded, the blast threw off Kara's ship, leaving Kal-El to make his journey alone. Flash forward several years shortly after after Superman has killed the Joker, Batman and his son Damien head to Arkham Asylum to put an end to Superman's murderous intentions. Superman plans to stop crime before it even happens, and if that means killing criminals before that happens, he's willing to make that sacrifice. But as the two fly closer to their destination, the controls of the Batjet become compromised, forcing the two to eject just before landing. Batman arrives at the Asylum with Cyborg firing a blast into the air, purposely missing Batman and bringing him to the ground. But after dispatching Cyborg, Batman and Damien head into Arkham through its main gates, taking down the currently stationed guards. Before they can enter into the building though, Wonder Woman steps up, telling Batman that this is something that needs to be done. The Joker has forced their hand. What happened to Metropolis changed the world, and now they have to change with it. After a brief fight, Batman takes the Lasso of Truth, throwing it into Wonder Woman, asking where he can find Superman. As hard as she tries, Wonder Woman gives into the Lasso, giving Batman the location, shouting that he can't turn his back on Superman like this. He has to help him! Batman throws down the rope, telling her, That's why I'm here. Inside the jail cell, the prisoners are being transported when a riot begins to break out. But before it can go on too far, Superman floats through the crowd with red eyes, telling everyone, Get back in line. Just then, Batman leaps through a window, telling Superman, I can't let you do this. Superman asks him, why not? These inmates are irredeemable. Thieves, rapists, murderers, just like the Joker. Our fight for justice is never ending. Batman releases a red solar grenade, weakening Superman's powers enough to defeat him in battle. But just before Batman can put Superman into the kryptonite bindings, Damien appears with Victor Zaz, holding a knife to his throat. Damien asks Zaz how many women he's killed, and Zaz tells him, <laughs> 121. Damien scoffs, telling him, Man, that sounds encourageable to me. Batman calls to him, I'm warning you, don't do this! But Damien grips the battering, slicing through Zaz's neck, throwing him to the ground to bleed out. Damien looks at Zaz, telling him, Problem solved. Who's next? Damien shouts at him, and the two of them begin to fight, with Superman offering Damien a hand to two fly out of the prison. Flash forward to our current times. Superman's regime has fallen in with him. Damien and Cyborg are behind bars for what they've done. However, with Batman keeping the cowl off and helping secure Gotham as Bruce Wayne, he calls on the help of Green Arrow and Black Canary to help investigate what Brother Eye has found. Brother Eye was built as a means to help fight back crime before it can even happen, and it can do so in a non-lethal way, like Superman's original intention. The one thing that Ollie and Dinah didn't expect, though, was that Harley Quinn would be sitting at the computer controlling it. 
Harley explains that Gorilla Grodd is on the rise again, bringing together several super villains, calling themselves the Society. At the end of the comics, it was revealed that Grodd had actually been influenced to do Brainiac's bidding, so that he may find Krypton's sole survivor. Together, Harley, Ollie, and Dinah head into the swamps to find Deadshot overseeing a shipment of Scarecrow's fear gas that Grodd plans on using to take control of the planet. But just before the three of them can take action, Poison Ivy appears capturing them, revealing their presence to Scarecrow and the others. Harley manages to escape the vines holding the prisoner and defeats Poison Ivy. However, as she goes to help the others, Scarecrow sprays her with a new type of fear gas, making her relive Joker's beatings and abuse. Harley fights back against her fears, truly wanting to do something good, and tells the Joker that she isn't working for him anymore. As the gas begins to fade, she returns to the sides of Ali and Dinah, only to be confronted by Swamp Thing for attacking the Green. Scarecrow begins to make his escape, but Harley explains to Swamp Thing that they're the good guys here. It's Scarecrow and the others that he needs to worry about. After fighting and proving their points, Swamp Thing defends the three as Scarecrow makes his escape while still attacking. But during this time, the young Kara, now feeling the effects of the Yellow Sun and gaining her abilities, flies over Earth, taking it all in in all of its glory. She returns to Kondok, which as we discovered from the comic books, is where she's been learning about Earth and working with Black Adam and Wonder Woman as they tell her that they told her time and time again, going outside of Kondok is dangerous. Kara says that she spent decades lost in space, stuck in a hypersleep until Black Adam found her ship, and since then she's been cooped up with nothing to do. All she wants to do is help Earth and its people. All they're doing is fighting one another, and she can change that. Wonder Woman tells her that the world is without her cousin. Batman has eyes everywhere. They can't let her be known to him. Only when the time is right. There will be a time when they go and free Kal-El, and that Batman will answer to them. But back with the others, Harley, Ollie, and Dinah head into Gorilla City to try and take down Grodd after receiving word from Batman's mole inside of the city. It is here that we see the other members of the society, and with them is Catwoman. Harley is left to watch over the jet while Ollie and Dinah take down Catwoman and Bane. And just before they do, Dr. Fate appears before them, telling them that it is not their time to go. They must come with them before the Earth is destroyed. The two fight back Fate, finding out that Fate was being controlled by his helmet until they manage to take it off of him. Fate leaves them free of the helmet's control, stating that if they do not wish to go with him, there is nothing more that he can do. Just then, Grodd and the others attack, and Ali and Dida bring him down and cuff him. However, before they can be taken away, Brainiac's ship appears in the clouds, and he captures the two heroes. Brainiac tells them that he is here to find the one that they call Superman. For years, I believed that I had destroyed Krypton and all of its remnants. Superman's survival is an oversight that I must correct, but your planet has piqued my interest. It must be collected and examined. Back over the rest of Earth, Brainiac's beta drones begin to descend, and over in the Bat Cave, Batman asks Brother Eye to give him a report on the team in Gorilla City. Brother Eye says that they cannot do that, for they are no longer Brother Eye. Just then, Brainiac appears on the screen, telling Batman the same thing that he told Ollie and Dinah. With no other choice, Batman suits up and rushes out of the Batcave to stop Brainiac. Meanwhile, back in Kondok, Wonder Woman and Black Adam, looking into an orb, see Brainiac's arrival. Kara tells them, see? And she yells that they need to hurry and get Kal-El. They can't fight Brainiac without him. But meanwhile, over at Superman's cell, someone else had the same idea. Batman walks up asking, what can you tell me about Brainiac? Superman hears the name and stands up asking, how do you know that? Brainiac is the one who killed my parents and destroyed Krypton. Batman asks, how do we defeat him? And Superman shouts, you can't! Not without my help! Batman turns, telling him, we'll find another way. During this time, up in the snowy mountains at the Luther Wayne Climate Research Station, the Flash, Barry Allen overhears on a ham radio that the Earth is being attacked. After being pardoned for aiding Batman in defecting and stopping Superman's regime, the Flash was allowed to remain free so long as he never used his powers. The one time that he did in the comic books, no one was happy with him. The Flash tried to not respond, but after hearing what is going on on the planet, he puts on his suit and he races to the city. After stopping a group of betas trying to kill humans, up on the rooftops, Deadshot focuses in on Flash, fires a shot, hitting Flash in the back of the knee. Back in Gorilla City, though, Catwoman leads a group of gorillas after capturing Harley so that they can bring her to Grodd. After seeing Brainiac's ship in the sky, Catwoman turns around, freeing Harley, revealing that she is Batman's mole, because as we learned in the comics, she's actually been with Bruce Wayne this whole time now. Meanwhile, with Flash, Deadshot corners him, telling him, you're looking a little slow. Flash brushes it off, telling him, Ah, that's what retirement will do to you. Still having some speed, he grabs Deadshot asking, Why are you doing this? And Deadshot tells him, I don't have much of a choice. Grodd's got a nano explosive in my head. But just after the two of them fight, there's a yellow flash, knocking Flash to the ground. 
Flash looks up to see Eobard Thawn shouting, You shouldn't even be in this timeline! Eobard beats into the Flash, and soon the two begin racing through city after city as Eobard is trying to catch up. Eobard manages to get a hit in, knocking Flash down, and when Flash asks why he isn't in his own timeline, Eobard yells, Because I can't go home, Barry! One of your regime buddies killed one of my ancestors. Now I'm trapped here in a paradox. I can never go home but at least I can hurt you. Flash comes out on top in the fight though, and just then the Green Lantern Hal Jordan appears wearing his Green Lantern uniform, which he earned back in a giant battle in the comics. Flash asks, did you steal another ring to get back into the core? And Hal tells him, the Guardians locked me up and trained me to overcome my fears. I earned the second chance that they gave me. And the Flash shouts, then the Guardians have made a mistake. The two exchange blows and soon they realize that they're both fighting for the same thing. The Flash follows the signal left for him by Batman and he quickly says that they can use all the help that they can get with Batman telling him, yeah, but not yours. You didn't earn this. Just then a rope snaps, dropping a large wooden crate, but before it can crush both Batman and Flash, Hal Jordan grabs it with his ring, safely putting it aside. He shouts, I am not that guy anymore. I can understand why you wouldn't trust me, but you can trust the Guardians. This ring means something. Batman stares at it for a moment and then tells him, might be time to widen my circle of trust. What we need right now is Aquaman and his Marines. Hal tells him that Aquaman isn't very happy in getting roped into Superman's regime. He's pretty sure Aquaman won't be happy to see him. Batman turns and walks away telling him, yeah, you're gonna have to get used to that, Hal, if you're gonna come back to the side of right. Hal rushes over to Atlantis to seek the aid of Aquaman, but Aquaman makes it clear that he has no desire to help the surface people. He will remain here to protect Atlantis. He goads Hal Jordan, and Hal Jordan feels the rage building up inside of him, and the voice is telling him to let it out. He shakes it off after defeating Aquaman, telling him that they need to work on this together. The surface is already at war, and soon so will Atlantis. Just then, the explosions are starting, and they can be heard, and Brainiac begins his assault on the sunken city. Hal fights back Bane and Cheetah, but that's when Atrocitus steps up, telling Hal, Give him to your rage. Atrocitus tells him, Sinestro's lantern slaughtered millions, but you must pay for what you've done. However, there is something else inside of you. Atrocitus covers Hal in anger, holding out a red ring to him, telling him, You've betrayed the Green Lanterns. This is your calling. Hal recites the Green Lantern mantra, overcoming Atrocitus' advances, and he casts him out of Atlantis. But while Brainiac starts deploying more betas around the world, over in Superman's cell, Firestorm and Blue Beetle are sent to watch over him. As Damien and Cyborg sit in their cells, Damien can hear the sounds of something being ripped apart and he looks up to see the ceiling is being pulled off. A bag drops before him and that's when he sees Kara floating there. Black Adam makes his move on freeing Superman but Firestorm and Blue Beetle are there to try and stomp him. After that, Damien wearing a new black and red uniform steps out to put an end to both of them. Over in Superman's cell, Cyborg hurries over to try and take down the red solar lamps and he asks who freed them. Kara's voice tells him, it was I. As Superman asks, is it really... You? Before the two can reminisce about their families, Firestorm and Blue Beetle appear to stop Cyborg. Once they stop Cyborg, Kara steps in to hold the two back, but realizing that he doesn't have much ground to stand on, Firestorm decides to release a nuke inside of the facility. But at that moment, Batman appears to see what Firestorm is about to do, and he tells Firestorm to stand down. Wonder Woman tells Batman that he can't do this alone, and Batman, for once, agrees with her. He turns back, hitting the control panel, unlocking Superman's cell. But he makes it clear that they will do this together, without killing. As Superman looks back at Kara, he silently agrees, and everyone decides to meet back up in one of Batman's old hideouts. With no one saying a word, Catwoman shows everyone all of the places that Brainiac has been focusing his attack. As she goes on, Batman pulls Firestorm aside to discuss what he was about to do back at that prison. Firestorm apologizes, stating that he just thought. But Batman stops him, telling him that he can do a mission for him discreetly. Back at the table, Catwoman tells everyone that their main goal is to evacuate all of the cities where Brainiac has his ships, but first, they have to restore the comms. They'll do that by having Cyborg retake Brother Eye from Brainiac. Cyborg calls out that he isn't there to fix Batman's tech, as Superman walks in stating that based on the information that Kara gave him, they don't have much time. Cyborg will restore Brother Eye, and Batman adds that Catwoman and Harley will join him in the Batcave. He then stands up telling everyone, remember, out there there is no regime, so you do not kill. Everyone quietly looks around the room and Batman tells them all, All right, move out. Cyborg boom tubes himself and the girls over to Arkham Asylum to take the underground passage that leads to the Batcave, but Poison Ivy appears to be trying to stomp. After she uses her pheromones to charm Harley, Cyborg and Catwoman are forced to fight her and Poison Ivy to continue on. Once Harley is broken out of Poison Ivy's charm, the three head down, and Harley and Catwoman reveal the path to Brother Eye. Deadshot and Bane then appear to try and stomp them, and after a quick fight with the two of them, Cyborg and Catwoman make it to Brother Eye. Before Cyborg can plug in, 
Brainiac appears on screen telling Cyborg that he could become so much more if you would just shed your humanity. Cyborg says that he'd rather stick with the humans and Brainiac possesses him, pulling out an all-machine version of himself named Grid. Once Grid is taken care of, Cyborg connects into the computer, pushing Brainiac out of the system. Meanwhile, over in Metropolis, Wonder Woman and Kara make their way in, but Kara is quickly blasted by Cheetah. As Wonder Woman gets ready to fight, she is also hit, knocked into another building, and has to fight through both Captain Cold and Scarecrow. As Wonder Woman gets back out, Cheetah confronts her, but Wonder Woman comes out on top. Wonder Woman gets ready to kill Cheetah, but Harley stomps her just before she does, telling her, Bats told you not to kill anyone. Wonder Woman tells her that she has enough blood on her hands, and Harley tells her, you're right. You're trying to impress the wrong guy. Wonder Woman charges in with her sword and stabs into Harley's stomach, just in time for Kara to find her way back and see it happening. Kara shoots through, knocking Wonder Woman off the building and says that she's sorry that she's going to have to do this. Using her heat vision, Kara cauterizes the wound, giving Harley more time to live. But Wonder Woman, as Wonder Woman, jumps back up into the building and Kara knocks her down, telling her, I trusted you! I'm gonna take Harley to see Kal-El. Meanwhile, over in Superman's Fortress of Solitude, Damien combs over the Kryptonian records, telling Superman that it's just as they thought. There's no information on Brainiac. As Kara arrives, she says that they need to talk. Wonder Woman almost killed Harley Quinn. Superman tells her, I heard what happened, and it's unfortunate that Wonder Woman decided to handle the situation that way. But it's also unfortunate for you to stop Wonder Woman. Kara asks, What are you talking about? Harley was trying to help! As Superman tells her, don't be so naive. Harley would have have to have been dealt with sooner or later. Kara takes a step back, thinking back to something Wonder Woman said about the Joker being executed and then realizes Superman is the one who did it. He shouts, I took one life to save millions. But Kara asks, it wasn't just one. How many has it been? People are scared of that symbol. Superman tells her, humans need strong leadership. They should have been the ones to save themselves. Kara shouts, asking, whose words are those? jor or General Zod's? As Kara attempts to leave, she is stopped by both Damien and Black Adam, but succeeds in knocking them both out. Superman himself tries to stop her, but just as Kara gets the upper hand, everyone hears explosions and Kara shouts, Brainiac has begun extracting cities. Damien then asks Superman, what are we going to do about her? Superman says, it doesn't matter right now. Once this is all over, she'll have to choose. Either fight with me or against me. A short while later, back over in Metropolis, everyone begins their attack on Brainiac's ship to stop him from taking the city. As the heroes attack, Brainiac's ship absorbs the hits, reflecting it back much harder. As Superman and Batman begin to realize this, Kara flies up to the ship to attack, punching it with all of her strength. The hit stuns Kara, but Superman then tries to save her, and that's when he too is caught in the blast, sending the both of them into the ground. With the two Kryptonians out of the picture, Brainiac begins to extract the city with no one there to stop him. As Superman begins to regain consciousness, he flies up seeing the city of Metropolis has been taken. In his anger, he flies up into Brainiac's shield, only to be repelled again. Batman radios to him that his attack causes the shield to concentrate its energy where he's attacking. If you move faster than it, you might be able to break through. Superman begins to hit the shield in different points, faster and faster, and just as he begins to get through, Brainiac tells him, that's impressive, but it still will not be enough. As the shield lets off another blast, Superman is knocked down into the hole that was once Metropolis. Brainiac flies his ship lower to extract Superman, but as Superman tries to fight it, he's taken into the ship. A few moments go by with Batman flying into the crater to find Kara sitting there, stating that she can't find his body or hear his heartbeat. She was supposed to protect him from this, and now Cal is gone. Batman tells her, I'll miss him too. He was once a good friend, but the Joker got to him and I lost him. Moments later, the rest of the heroes arrive and Wonder Woman shouts to Batman that this is all his fault. If he would have just followed their lead! While everyone begins to argue over what they should have done, a projection of Brainiac appears stating, Such discord. It's no wonder why the humans have never expanded their civilization. In one hour, my betas will explode in unison, burning away Earth's atmosphere, rendering this world a barren moon. Unless you surrender Kara Zor-El to she is Krypton's sole survivor and my last chance to study the effects of the yellow sun on Kryptonian cells. Surrender her and your Earth will live. Batman begins to step forward, stating that even if he would honor that deal, they still wouldn't give her over. Brainiac tells him that they have one hour to reconsider, and he vanishes. Kara says that maybe she should go but Batman tells her no, they'll find a way around their shield. Cyborg then says that maybe they can short them out if they generate an insane amount of power. Black Adam says perhaps science isn't the answer. He can channel immense magical power from the Rock of Eternity through the Gateway in Kandak. But we will need a relic, a medium to harness it, something that can withstand the power. Aquaman steps forward, slamming his trident down, asking, how about the trident of Atlantis? Black Adam tells him that could work. 
Catwoman then asks, even if they could do that, Brainiac can control the ship with his thoughts. Cyborg says it's true, but they did cut him off from Brother Eye. It's possible that they could make a signal disruptor that blocks his neural network. Batman then tells Aquaman and Adam to make for Kondok. The rest will prepare for the attack. The two rush over to Kondok and they begin charging the Rock of Eternity. But as Black Adam reveals the portal to it, Brainiac's computer pings its location. Just then, Ali and Dinah attack, possessed by Grodd, attempting to enter the dimension where Black Adam is hiding the stone. The two manage to fight them back, finding out that Grodd has snuck in through the portal while their attention was diverted. After their fight, Aquaman stabs Grodd in his side, and Grodd tells him that there is nothing that they can do to stop Brainiac. I have seen his mind. Aquaman tells him that Brainiac may not be stopped, but he can and he stabs the trident through Grodd's chest. Once the preparations are done, Black Adam channels his magic into Aquaman's trident, giving him the power to disrupt the shields. Back in Metropolis, Cyborg returns giving Batman the disruptor to sever Brainiac's link to the ship, just in time for Aquaman's attack to hit the Brainiac ship. Batman and Kara take to the skies, entering into it, but shortly into their search for Brainiac, they stumble upon Brainiac's collection of worlds. As the two are distracted, Brainiac attacks, capturing the two of them, and then Brainiac separates Kara from Batman. Brainiac then looks at Batman, telling him, You are but an ordinary man, with no chance to win. The Betas begin to surround Batman, getting ready to kill him, but through the crowd, Superman shoots through, destroying the Betas, holding Batman captive. Once the room is cleared, Dr. Fate, now under Brainiac's control, appears before them, stating that the battle that they wage echoes across the universe. Your war has had consequences that neither of you could have seen. As the battle finishes, Superman takes Dr. Fate's helmet, crushing it, freeing him from his torment in Brainiac's control. Fate thanks the two of them for freeing him, but as Fate tells them that they need to maintain order, one of Brainiac's mechanical arms shoots out, stabbing him in the chest. Before they can help him, Brainiac descends out of the shadows, telling them that he offers them deliverance. Your world is poisoned. Resources exhausted. Batman calls out, we will find a way. And Superman follows up telling him, we always do. As the fight breaks out, Batman and Superman overpower Brainiac, giving Batman the time that he needs to use the neural disruptor, cutting Brainiac's connection to the ship. Just as he does, Cyborg radios in stating that this did work. All of the betas are shutting down. And Superman says, that's good. They need to fight Kara. But just as he finishes, Brainiac's ship begins to fall out of the sky with no Brainiac. That ship has no control. Superman looks to Brainiac's chair, stating that the ship is controlled by pure thought, right? Batman tells him, you can't, it might kill you. And Superman says, sounds like a perfect job for me. He then grabs two of the connectors, slamming them into his head. Before the ship can plummet into the ground, Superman manages to steer the ship just in time for Brainiac to wake up. He gets up shouting, relinquish control of my ship. But Kara bursts out of her cell, stunning Brainiac long enough for Batman to knock him out. Still connected to the ship, Superman tells it to start putting the cities back. And the ship listens to his commands. Kara watches, listening as the cities are rebuilt. But while everyone else arrives, Superman falls out of the chair. Aquaman says that he can hear it. The heart of Atlantis beats once more. You have done it. Superman picks himself up, stating, No, not everyone. There are some cities removed from the database. Metropolis and Coast City. Hal asks if there's a way to get them back, and Superman tells him that he's sorry. As Wonder Woman helps Superman to his feet, she says that they must not let this continue. If Brainiac lives, then more worlds will meet this fate. Superman begins to walk towards his body, and Batman stops him, telling him, No, even if I agreed on killing him, we can't. We need to get the other cities back. We need Metropolis and Coast City. Superman shrugs him off, telling him, No. With more time and Cyborg's help, the ship will obey me. Aquaman shouts that they cannot allow Brainiac to live, and Superman yells at Batman as Batman pulls out a gold-plated knife. Superman then yells, Some lives need to be taken, and as he finishes, Batman swipes the knife at Superman's chest, forcing him to his knees. He tries to get up, but says that his powers are out, and Superman tells him, Gold kryptonite. Enough exposure and you'll be depowered permanently. As Superman gets up, he says, This has to end, Bruce! Now, here in the game, you're given the choice to choose whose side you will continue on to determine your ending. Siding with Superman and Batman have completely different outcomes. Batman's ending is... The fight between the two great heroes continue. And as Superman knocks the knife out of his hand, he grabs Batman by the throat. Kara tells him to stop the room, then quickly divides into different sides of the argument. Flash trying to hold Wonder Woman back, Aquaman attacking Batman with the Trident of Atlantis, Hal trying to reason with Superman, and Black Adam attacking Kara. As Aquaman attacks, Batman disarms him, taking the Trident and stabbing it into Aquaman's leg, forcing him to kneel. He then turns to leave, stating that he's tired of fighting him. As Superman and Hal's fight takes them outside, Flash hurries over to help Kara up. But Kara says, Batman knew. 
He knew that we would double cross him. Black Adam then takes Batman out of the ship, releasing him to fall to the ground. And just before making impact, Batman spreads wings safely landing. He then radios to Kara to lead Superman to the Batcave. He'll take care of the rest. Kara heads outside, getting Superman and Wonder Woman to chase her. And as they arrive at the Batcave, Superman said, I knew that you were going to bring us here. Batman calls out, you're right. And he steps out on a new battle suit, one strong enough to go toe to toe with Superman himself. He goes through Wonder Woman first and then finds Superman sitting over Kara's body. As the two look at each other, Superman says, Felt like old times fighting side by side again, didn't it? And Batman asks, Do you remember the night that you told me that Lois was pregnant? Superman laughs, telling him, Yeah, but you already knew before I even said anything. Batman looks away, stating, It was a good memory. I miss the people that we were then. Superman tells him, I do too. And he flies in, punching Batman. As the two exchange blows back and forth, Batman starts to take Superman, punching him so hard that even Superman falls to the ground. He tries to get back up, but as he lifts himself up, his arms give out, and he passes out. Batman falls to his knees with Kara running up, asking if he... But Batman tells her that he'll be out for a while, and I'm sorry. A short while later, back at the Fortress of Solitude, Superman stands with kryptonite cuffs, and he says that the Phantom Zone won't hold him forever. Batman activates the projector, telling him, Yeah. And when you return, we'll be ready. As the portal opens, Kara says that she wishes that this... But Superman stops her, stating, We were family. And Kara tells him they still are. Hopefully, we'll see that someday. He turns, walking towards the portal. But before going in, he gives Batman one last cold stare. that disappears into nothingness. Once the portal closes, Batman asks Kara if she's alright. And she tells him no. This symbol should give people hope. He made them fear it. Batman tells her, What matters to the person wearing it? When Clark and I founded the Justice League... We didn't govern people, we protected them, plain and simple. Maybe the world could use a team like that again. Welcome to the Circle of Trust. As Batman holds out his hand, Kara looks at it and smiles as she takes it. Now, if you chose Superman, this was your ending. Most of everything from Batman's ending holds up until the final battle between the two giants. Instead of Batman overtaking Superman, it is Superman who overtakes Batman. And after their battle, Superman picks Batman up by the next dating. If I wanted, I could have killed you so long ago, it would have been easy. Batman tells him, go on then, show me what a villain looks like. Superman's eyes begin to glow as he tightens his grip, and then he headbutts Batman, tossing him to the ground. Wonder Woman looks at him, stating, he's still breathing. And Superman tells her that if he would die, he would die a martyr. We need him alive for now. Wonder Woman then asks, what about Kara? And Superman says, she's young, give her time, she'll come around. Wonder Woman then asks, and if she doesn't, Superman folds his arms, telling her, she will. This time, everyone will. As time passes, Superman walks to Brainiac's ship, dressed in the same attire that Brainiac once did, having the same white glow in his eyes. He walks up to the red solar cell, and as Kara looks at him, she says that he did it. He bonded with Brainiac's ship. Superman tells her Brainiac is dead. The remaining city's restored, and just like I said, Earth is at peace. I just wish that you would come around. I'm building an army, one that would rival even the combined forces of the Lantern Corps. I want you to lead it with me. Kara tells him, never, Cal. As Superman then says that, you will either make the right choice or I will make it for you. Just then, footsteps can be heard and as a figure walks up, Kara holds her hands over her face, terrified. The camera pans back on the figure and we see that it is Batman wearing Superman's S symbol. The headgear that he is wearing is that of Brainiacs, the one that he used to control people's minds. Superman looks back at Kara, asking, what's it going to be? And there you have it, another video game complete story right here at Comic Story. And now we have some more video game stuff coming up very soon. We're going to begin covering more of the Assassin's Creed storyline since there is an amazing comic book that I'm a huge fan of. And we're going to be covering the Spider-Man storyline for the PS4 very soon as well. But let me know in the comments down below some video games that you may be interested in so we can start working on those and getting them over to the channel. We're going to be doing some tie-ins with we're going to be doing some tie-ins with upcoming releases very soon, but you may also want some other things. So let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to get all of your recaps on your favorite things. See you next time right here.